is a polynomial regression example from your textbook, page 304, number 9. This question has somebody wanting to attend multiple graduation events. They interviewed a bunch of people to see how many events they attended and how much they spent in total. So they interviewed one person and attended one event and spent 200 bucks. Another person attended three events and spent 1300 bucks, etc. So the question asks us to use linear regression to estimate how many events they can afford if they have 750 bucks. So if we're going to use linear regression, we need to enter this data into our calculator. We do that by doing stat, g edit, and then enter all of this data into L1 and L2. So L1 by default is the independent variable, L2 is the dependent variable. So the number of events in this question will be the independent variable and the cost will be the dependent variable. The amount of money that you spend depends on the number of events that you attend. So let's go ahead and enter this data into our calculator. So for the first column, one, And on to the next column, we got 200. So at this point, we should make sure that the columns match up in terms of number of numbers. Uh, what that means is if I had an extra number here, and this one stopped at 600, uh, that wouldn't be good. The number of rows in each column has to match up. The next thing we need to do is adjust our window. So we go window, and we want to adjust the x min, the x max, so it fits all of these values in. So minimum x should be 1, and maximum x should cover 5. So just to be on the safe side, go between 0 and 6. And for the y values, the minimum y value is in maximum, so it should be between those two. We go 0 and we go 2000. That all covered. So when we hit graph, we should see that range. Uh, but we don't see any data points. What we need to do is turn the data points on. So the plot is currently off. We need to turn it on. There we go. Now when we hit graph, we should see our data points. There they are. The next thing we need to do is find the linear regression function that fits this data. So we go down to linear regression. Enter. Now this will find a function that fits all the data points that we just put into the stat. If we want to paste this function into y equals, what we need to do is hit vars, y vars, function, y1. Now this will take the linear regression function and put it into y1. So we need to enter, there's our function and paste it into y1 for us automatically. So we found our linear regression equation, and here's our graph. So we have a bunch of the data points, and the linear regression function that fits the data. So if we want to find out how many events this guy can attend, we need to find out what event number corresponds to the cost of the vertical axis of 750 bucks. So we want to figure out how many events they can attend if they have 750 bucks. We put in 750 into y2. Graph that. So here's our number of events that we can attend, giving 750 bucks is our maximum we can spend. So what we need to do is calculate the intersect of these two lines. Calculate the intersect. This turns out to be about 2.59. So 
so they can attend 2.59 events given that they have 750 bucks. So the number of events is 2.59. But we can't attend 60% of an event, and we can't really round this up to three events because they don't have quite enough for that. So we're going to have to round this down to two events. So given that they have 750 bucks, the maximum number of events that they can attend is two. Here's another regression example from the textbook. This is on page 315, number eight. So we have a 225 liter hot water tank. It's from a week at zero minutes. The remaining volume is measured every five minutes for the first four minutes. The first part asks us to plot the data and describe the trend. So we pull up our calculators and we're going to want to put this data into our calculator. Do that by hitting stat, edit, and we have a choice. We have to put one of these rows into L1 and the other one into L2. So generally the time will be the independent variable and by default your calculator puts the independent variable in L1. So we're going to go ahead and put the time L1. The next column. It's important that these two values match up for each row. If there was one extra number here or here or maybe two extras. Uh, that would be getting they should probably go back and check the answer of data correctly. Uh, but this seems good so far. We want to look at this on the graph. But if we hit graph, chances are it'll probably be in this window. We need to adjust the window to include all of this data in our window. For the x values, we have time on the x axis. So that goes between 0 and 40. Might as well go between negative 10 and 50. For the y values, it goes between about uh, 20 and 230. So we'll maybe go between uh, negative 10 and 250. So we check out our graph. <coughs> we won't see any data here because we need to turn the plot on. So we'll turn that on. The graph and there's the data. So it sort of looks, um, doesn't quite look linear, it's sort of curvy. The trend looks quadratic. Next question asks us to determine the quadratic regression equation. So again, we'll need our calculator and we'll have to go to stat, calculate, and then scroll down to quadratic regression, select that, and we'll probably have to use that regression equation later, so we might as well put whatever that function comes out into y1. There we go. So here's our function, and it's pasted into y1 for us. So our regression equation is volume equals 0.065 t squared minus 7.651 t is 224.885. The next part of the question wants us to determine when the tank was half full. So the tank is 225 liters capacity. Half of 225 is 112.5 liters. So here's our graph of the data. And the line is the quadratic regression function that fits that data. 
Now we have volume on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. So we should put 112.5 into Y2. We graph that. It's about 112.5 liters. Tank will have been draining for a certain amount of time. And if we want to find that time, we need to find the intersect of these two curves. So we'll select our two curves, guess where the intersect is. And at 112.5 liters, it turns out to be about 17.2 minutes. So when the tank is half full, the time is 17.2 minutes. The next part of the question wants us to determine when the tank is empty. The tank will be empty when the volume reaches zero, so it'll happen somewhere down here where this curve crosses the x-axis. So if we want to find where it's empty, we need to find the zero of this function, or the x-intercept. In order to find the x-intercept, we need to pick a spot to the left of the x-intercept and to the right of the x-intercept. So pick a spot where the y values are positive, and then try to pick a spot where the y values are negative. We can't do that because the window isn't very good. So I'm trying to go further right, but the window isn't allowing me to do that. So we need to expand the window a bit. Maybe go up to 70. So we calculate the x-intercept again. Go to zero. Pick a y down there. And try to get one that's negative. There we go. And there's the x-intercept. 56.2 minutes. So the time is 56.2 minutes when the tank is empty. Here's another regression example from the textbook. This is page 316, number 10. This question asks us to create a scatter plot from this data here. So we need to enter this data into our calculator, we go to stat, edit and then put all the x values into L1 and all the y values into L2. So here we go. 0, 5, 1 to the second column, So next thing we want to do is adjust the window so that we can see all of this data on the graph of our calculator. So we should maybe go between 0 and maybe uh, 60, because that's the maximum x value. Uh, we can go between maybe 10 and 70 just to be safe though. And then for the y values, it goes between 1 and about 400 for the max there. So maybe we'll go between negative 10 and uh, 500 just to cover everything there. So now when we hit graph, there's all of our data points. So these data points seem to describe the cubic relation because it seems like they have uh, a couple turning points in here. So the next part of the question asks us to determine the cubic regression that fits the data. In order to find the cubic regression that fits this data, we go to stat, go to calculate, go down to cubic regression, select that one, and we'll put that into y1 while we're at it. So here's our cubic regression function and we have it pasted into y1 for us. So we're looking at the graph, it follows pretty closely. So that's how you do a cubic regression 